Alright, we are ready to start chapter 5.2, Rho's Theorem and the Mean Value Theorem. This is the second session of our flipped classroom. Okay, so we are going to start with Rho's Theorem. The objective here with Rho's Theorem is to just kind of get out of it some predictions that we'll be able to draw about a function over a certain interval. So what Rolle's theorem states exactly um, that I got from your textbook on page 322 is if we're studying a function f and it's continuous on a closed interval from a to b and differentiable over that interval, um, if we're looking at the function at a and the function at b equaling the same thing, so the y values are equal, then there is at least one number c in that interval such that f prime of c is equal to zero. We're going to break that down. So, first of all, remember what continuous means. Continuous means that there are no breaks, no holes, no asymptotes, no gaps. So it's one flowing function. Um, another thing to remember, and I put a little star by this, is that all polynomials are continuous. So if I ever asked you for um, where is f of x equals x squared plus 4x. So, oops, f of x equals 4x squared. I think I just changed that, plus 4x. If I asked you where that is continuous, well, because it's a polynomial, we would just say from negative infinity to infinity. Just be careful of rational functions. Um, you really have to look out for where is um, that function undefined. All right, let's look at Rolle's theorem graphically to kind of understand what it is visually. So once again, they said that if it's continuous over a section or a range from A to B. So I'm going to go ahead and section off our graph here. And we're going to call this interval right here, this is our A, and this is our B. Um, and all it's saying is, if f of A is equal to f of B, so let's go ahead and choose some sort of value that these are both equal to, and let's call it D. So this output value, we'll call it D. If they so happen that at A, there's the same output, and at B, there's the same output, um, so f of A equals f of B, then there's no way around it. It's unavoidable. You could draw something maybe like this, but eventually those have to hook back up, and so what we got was some sort of absolute minimum, or um, if I had gone up, some sort of absolute maximum. So let's look at our definition again, and maybe um, this time we can make some sense of it. Here is that um, definition we were looking at earlier. And once again, all we're saying is that let f be continuous. So it's one smooth flowing line over a certain given interval. Um, and basically, they're just saying if those at, at those endpoints, they're starting at the same output, so at the same y value, then there is at least one number. Um, there is at least one critical point essentially is what they're saying, or one value for x in which we will have a maximum or minimum. Okay, to illustrate, to illustrate Rolle's theorem further, further, I present a challenge to you. Um, I'm going to ask you to plot the points 1, 3 and 5, 3. Very challenging, I know. So I'm going to get you started to help you out. Alright, here's the real challenge. I challenge you over this interval from x equals 1 to 5, so from 1 to 5, on this closed interval to draw a continuous line such that there is no pretty much maximum or minimum. So there is no f prime of x equaling 0. I'm going to give a really weak effort. All right, I'm going to just connect these dots right here. Here's my continuous flowing graph. And what you'll notice, I didn't do a very good job in avoiding the fact that I do have two extrema. 
one minimum, one maximum, you could look right here and say, oh, well, at this, this value of this f function, so this is my f of x function, if I looked right here and found the rate of change of this function at f prime of x, when x is equal to, well, here in this case, 2, so f prime of 2, um, at that instant on this function, we do have a derivative or a slope of a tangent line that is equal to 0. So I didn't do a very good job. Go ahead and try to connect these two endpoints of this interval with the continuous line um, and avoid this rate of change of being 0. But um, I can guarantee you I will shut down whatever you bring. Sorry. All right, we're going to start with example three, um, or number three. Uh, the directions state to find the two x-intercepts of the function and show that f prime of x equals zero at some point in between. Um, so what we're going to have to do is find the x-intercepts. So um, first of all, one thing to note is the x-intercepts are where they're crossing the x-axis. So um, you're going to be looking for the points at which it crosses the, the x-axis. So in other words, where y is equal to zero. When we're solving for x-intercepts, you're going to be setting then y equal to 0 and solving for the x values. So being that this is a quadratic, there's a couple ways you can go about doing that. You can either use the quadratic formula, which will always give you the x values of the x-intercepts. Um, otherwise, you can always try to factor it. And I hope you see this is factorable. Um, I can go ahead and find the two factors, negative 2 and 1 because they multiply to be that and add up to be negative 1. So using this factored form, what I can go ahead and say is the zero product property would state that if this factor, x minus 2, is equal to 0, then this whole thing goes to 0. Solve for my x. I get when x equals 2. I have an x-intercept. So I'm going to go ahead and write that. When x is equal to 2, y is equal to 0. Uh, also, if this factor right here, x plus 1, is equal to 0, solve for that. When x is equal to negative 1, and you can see it, negative 1 plus 1 would be 0. 0 times anything, this would happen to be negative 3, but 0 times negative 3 would equal 0. So negative 1 would also make this statement true. All right, so now that we have the two x-intercepts, basically what we're looking at, I might not know what this graph is. Hopefully, you all do, that it is a quadratic, and that I have these two x-intercepts identified at negative 1, 0, and at 2, 0. And what we're hoping now is on this closed interval that we are going to be finding um, an f prime of x equals 0 between them. So we're going to have to say... Just you, going back to the directions, we found the x-intercepts. Now we have to show that f prime of x equals 0 at some point in between them. Hopefully it's going to happen between here. So going back to our original function, I'm just going to rewrite it down here. f of x is equal to x squared minus x minus 2. I'm going to have to derive this. I'm going to find my f prime of x. So I'm going to have to just take these one at a time. Um, that is the difference rule of differentiating. So what we get is f prime of x is equal to 2x minus 1. What I'm interested in is when f prime of x is equal to 0. So I'm going to go ahead and sub this in for 0, 2x minus 1, and now solve for that x. Solving for this. So we get, oops, we get 1 is equal to 2x. Divide both sides by 2. What we get is x is equal to 1 half. What we have just found is that we do have a critical value or um, an x value in which f prime of x is equal to 0 at 1 half. So happening right about here, um, we know that there's going to be some sort of minimum or maximum. You can go ahead and plug that in. Um, this, the directions don't ask us to do that, but if you wanted to, plug this back into your original equation. What we're going to get is f of 1 half is equal to 1 half squared minus 1 half minus 2. Um, when you do that, this is going to be the 0.25. This one's minus 0.5 minus 2. 
we're going to get equals negative 2.25. So you could go ahead and just sketch in that minimum value. There it is. All right. There is my derivative equaling 0. We're going to look at a second example. We're going to work through number 8 from the homework. And I'll read the directions to you straight from the book. So first of all, we have to check whether or not Rolle's theorem can be applied. And I just want to remind you what Rolle's theorem states. Um, first of all, we're going to just be looking at some sort of function f. Okay, and over a certain specified interval from a to b. And we need to figure out, is it continuous? Well, looking back at our original equation, this is a polynomial, so yes, it's continuous throughout. So we don't have to worry about any breaks or holes, so so far it's good. And then we have to think about, well, in order for Rolle's theorem to apply, the endpoints, the y values at those endpoints of our interval, have to be equal to each other. So that's the first thing that we're going to check now. We need to know if f of 1 is equal to f of 4. Because those are our two endpoints, and in order for Rolle's theorem to apply, f of a has to equal f of b. So I'm going to go ahead and figure out, are they equal, by just plugging them into our equation. So at this x value 1, we're going to plug that in and see what y is equal to. So I have 1 squared minus 5, which is negative 4 plus 1. This is equal to negative 3. And just to warn you, this is going to have to equal to negative 3, too, if Rolle's theorem can be applied. So we have 4 squared, plugging it right up above, times 5 times 4. I think I said that wrong, but you see it. 4 squared minus 5 times 4 is going to be 16 minus 20. So negative 4 plus 1, and there we have it. We have a negative 3. So yes, Rolle's theorem can be applied. I'm going to draw kind of what this might be looking like. We're looking at a point right here and a point right here, 4 comma negative 3. And what we're going to now say is, yes, Rolle's theorem can be applied. And so the second part of your directions is, if it can, then what we have to uh, determine is, or find all values of c in this interval from a to b, such that f prime of c is equal to 0. Because we can predict that there has to be some sort of f prime of c equaling 0 between these two points. So I'm going to go ahead and look for them. f prime of x is going to be equal to the derivative. And once again, just going to apply the derivative to each one of these terms separately. Scalar. And then here's a constant. So here's what I got. f prime of x is equal to 2x minus 5. And what I want to figure out is, where is this going to be equal to 0? Or for what value of x is my derivative or the slope of the tangent line equal to 0? Solve for that x. So x is equal to 5 halves, Oops. or in other words, 2.5. So what you're going to notice is we're going to have a value of x such that the derivative is equal to 0 um, at x equals 2.5. And once again, if you want to, you can plug it into your original function. So we do know the critical value is right here. And I'm going to plug it in. We get 2.5, or f of 2.5 is equal to 2.5 squared minus 5 times 2.5 plus 1 and I'll use my calculator for this one whoops 2.5 squared we get equals negative 5.25 so actually I would have had to go down a little bit further here so over 2.5 comma is the x value, and the y value is negative 5.25. So if you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.25, um, there is kind of the, the shape of our parabola forming. Here is where the slope is equal to 0 over tangent line.